best in Africa possible, for keeping everyone alive, for bringing us back safe, for keeping all of you safe in love and unity. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for your prayers. Thank you for all the messages and phone calls, and thank you so much. Amen. I would love if I can have more light so you can see me and then I can see you too. <laughs> Amen. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that I struggled a bit with called Law the Bar. Amen. Law the Bar. Is anyone else left? This morning, God is talking to some of us. God is trying to bless someone and is asking, anybody out there that I can bless? Hallelujah. Amen. Everything that is written in the Bible is for us yes. now. now. It does not age. It's every day. Everything that is said in the Bible is true. It's the truth. If there is something that can change your life, go to the Bible and read the Bible. Definitely you will find something that can revive you, that can give you life. So God this morning is saying, is anybody left? Anyone? Amen? I'm going to read quickly from the second book of Samuel, chapter 9. It's a long text. So you will definitely appreciate my French accent. <laughs> By the way, Jeff, welcome to the house. Amen. Jeff has been a son of this house for 20 years. <laughs> I remember when you came to my house to help me fix my, um, my, my heat because I needed uh, to program for the entire year. So he came with his skills and it was done right there. So, so happy to see you back. Second Samuel chapter 9, David's kindness to Mephibosheth. And David said, is there still anyone left of the house of the family of Saul to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? There was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So they called him to David. And the king said, are you Ziba? And Ziba, shaking, said, yes, I am your servant. And the king said, is there no longer anyone left of the house of, of Saul? At this point, Ziba was almost dead. The tradition was when there is a new king, and the new king will kill the people from the old king, just because most of the time they are not getting along. And Without going too back in the story, Saul was the first king of uh, Israel, and he, did, he mistreated David. He wanted to kill him multiple times. But Jonathan, the son of Saul, was David's friend, and he did everything to save his life. Now Saul is dead, his son Jonathan is dead, and David is, David is the king. And David wanted to bless Jonathan. And he's asking, is there anyone left in the house of Jonathan? Hallelujah. So Ziba said, I, I am your servant. And the king said, is there any longer anyone left of the house of, of Saul to whom I may show the goodness and graciousness of God? Ziba replied to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan, one who is crippled. I am pretty sure he was saying, yeah, there, there is one son of Jonathan, the, the last one, he is crippled. Eh? And, and I think he even said, um, so the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba replied to the king, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel in Lodabar. In Lodabar. You will understand later. 
Then the king David sent word and had him brought from the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David and fell face down and lay himself down in respect. At this point, he did not know what will happen. Maybe this guy will kill me. Amen? And the King David said, do not be afraid, for I will certainly show your, your kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather, Saul, the King Saul, and you shall always eat at my table. Again, Mephibosheth lay himself face down and said, what is your servant that you should be concerned for a dead dog like me. Brothers and sisters, sometimes the blessing is for you, but you don't believe really you'll be the one who can do that. Brothers and sisters, the one who calls you is the one who qualifies you. Every time you have a word, grab it, embrace it. It is for you. Do not be afraid. The one who called you is the one who is going to qualify you. Amen. Then the king summoned uh, Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You and your sons and your servants shall cultivate the land for him, and you shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may have food to eat. But Mophobisheth, your master's grandson, shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to, to the king, your servants will do according to everything that my lord the king commands. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who lived in Ziba's house were servants to Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. Hallelujah. I know this is too long, but that's the Bible. It's the story. You have to situate your... Yeah, amen in the story. Hallelujah. Let me start by law the bar. The, the word law in the Hebrew language means no. I mean no. And the bar means pasture or word or communication. So when you put those two words together, <clears throat> law the bar means a place where there is no word. A place where there is nothing. Where there is no word, there is no revelation. Hallelujah. Lord Bar was considered like a ghetto town in, in, the, in the biblical uh, times. This was a place of desperation. I mean, a place of rejection. A, a place of no hope. Hallelujah. But today, I'm trying to tell you, Lord Bar was probably a place, a physical place, but what we're going through and what we're living today is a, is a spiritual Lord Bar. Yes, there is a, a place where nothing grows, where there is no hope, a place of desperation, but let me tell you, many of us are in Lord Bar. They live in the bar because they are going through desperation. There is nothing they do that produces. Hallelujah. That is my preaching today, and I hope you will follow me word by word. Hallelujah. Let me talk again about the physical Lord Bar. Lord Bar is a place where you will find the people are lost. People who have no uh, skills, no education. 
people who are left, who cast out from the society, like um, uh, homeless people. You understand. You have nobody to look after you. You are very poor. You have no education. You, have, you are nothing. And then you go live in a lower bar. Pr probably rent was not that expensive in lower bar. Amen. Amen. If you live in lower bar, people don't even pay attention to you. They pass by you. They even don't see you. How many times, I'm sorry to say that, you passed and then you see a homeless and then you pay attention to the homeless. And the homeless attracts you. Usually it does not happen that way. But when you see a person who is dressed well, who is driving a nice car, you are tempted to look at that person. The person becomes important. Brothers and sisters, it is not good to, to live in Lord Bar. Amen? Amen? Lord Bar is a spiritual place as well, where people are alone, forgotten, where people are misunderstood. As I said before, some people here live in Lord Bar. You are here, you are dancing, but you are not here. You live in the Lord Bar. Yes, you do, for different reasons. I guarantee you, after this service, some people will drive back to Lord Bar. <laughs> they will drive back to Lord Bar. They are here with us. They are jumping. They are giving you Wi-Fi five. But once the service is over, their GPS will bring back to Lord Bar. Hallelujah. A place where they are alone, no one understands them, no one loves them. A place of loneliness. Hallelujah. A place where no one cares about them, cares for them. If they come or they don't come, no one cares. No one will notice anyways. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A place where they have no solution to the issues that they are going through. If you give them two minutes, they are here. After two minutes, they are deep into their problems. Deep into the problem. They are not listening even to you. You live in Lord Bar. Hallelujah. Lord Bar is a place where the medication that works for some people, for you, it does not work. Amen? Lord Bar is a place where you are, you have a problem, you go for consultation, you go for testing and examinations, and everything, the results are negative. The problem that you have been dealing with is still there, and is getting worse. No matter what you do, you're going from one specialist to another one. Mm -mm. It's not improving. Lord Bar. Lord Bar is a place where you cry, but no one cares. No one has a solution for you. No one can help you. Lord Bar is a spiritual place for us as well. A place where there is desperation. A place there is no word. There is no revelation. Hallelujah. When you live in Lord Bar, physically or spiritually, it doesn't matter what the people tell you. It doesn't matter what the pastor tells you or preaches to you. You all have your own mind here. People may say you, actually you're beautiful, but in here you think you are unattractive. You think you are ugly. doesn't matter what they tell you. You're locked into a Lord Bar house. Hallelujah. Mentally, you are not well. You are unstable. The thing that makes you laugh yesterday, today, make you like crazy. Lord Bar. Hallelujah. No matter how gifted you are, you may be flagging very well, but when people say, you, you're the best, 
It's not registering here. You do not think that because your mind is already corrupt because you have been in Lord Bar for so long. Hallelujah. The people in Lord Bar are unbalanced, never satisfied, mentally challenged, and emotionally they are weak. They are weak. You lost a husband five years ago. You're still mourning today. It is time to leave Lord Bar. It is time to leave Lord Bar. You are divorced, but it's still hurting you today after three, four, five, six years. It is time to change your address. It is time. Many of us live in Lord Bar. Believe it or not, you, me, everyone, at some point in your life, you will experience Lord Bar. Mm -hmm. At any time of, at some point in your life, you are going to experience Lord Bar. Absolutely. I know in this church we have genocide survivors, the people who have, who lost everything from those people who, who lost all their relatives to the orphans who have no dad, no mom, to even the superstars that we know that earn a lot of money. They show up, they have a million. They have a lot of people around them. They do everything for them. From the homeless or the struggling mother, every single person at some point in your life, you will experience Lord Bar. So it's very important to understand how do I get in Lord Bar? And most important, how can I leave Lord Bar? How can I make my GPS to forget Lord Bar's address? How can I do that? Hallelujah. You have to understand that Lord Bar is a place of death. You may become comfortable with the problem you have living in the Lord Bar. You know all the streets, you know everything in the Lord Bar. But it's a place of death, hallelujah. Amen. Today, you and me are going to move out of Lord Bar. Amen. We are going to move out of Lord Bar. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, talk to someone and say, I am moving out of Lord Bar. I am not staying in the Lord Bar. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It starts with a, a plan. <laughs> I know some people are excited. I am changing my address today. Amen. Hallelujah. My GPS is not taking me to Lord Bar anymore. Amen. No, I say no. Hallelujah. A month ago when I preached, I spoke about God's plan. Believe it or not, even if you live in Lord Bar, God has a plan for you. Amen. Jeremiah 29 Chapter 11 says God has a plan to prosper you. So Lord Bar is not that plan. Hallelujah. God has a plan in your life. Despite difficulties, despite what you have been going through, despite what you are used for, about, every single day, God has a plan to save you, to prosper you. Hallelujah. That plan... I'm very happy to say it's not Lord Bar. Does not even look like hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, listen, you might be in Lord Bar right now, but you are not from Lord Bar. The DNA you have, it's an almighty God DNA. Hallelujah. God cannot have a plan for you for you to live in Lord Bar. No. Hallelujah. You may have been knocking at different doors and the right one has never opened for you. Ever. And then today you are living in a place of desperation. You do not understand what happened to you. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, God has a plan for you. And the plan is a different destiny. You close your eyes, what you see, that's not God's plan. God has something beautiful for you. You have to understand and tap into it. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. I know that your relationship with your spouse is probably shaky. Monday is up, Tuesday is down. 
and then probably Wednesday will be over. I know that. But God still has a plan for you, a plan to prosper you, a plan to bring joy and restore your family. Hallelujah. You may be sad, you may be bitter, you may be hopeless. I am telling you, God knows your pain. God knows what you're going through. God knows that it's hurting you. God is aware of that. And God is the one moving things behind the scene. You do not know. You don't understand. You, you, you have no clue what is happening. But God is the one behind the scene moving things for you. Hallelujah. I don't know why you are where you are right now. I don't know how you got in Lord Bar. I have no clue. And actually, I don't care. I don't, because God has a plan uh-huh, to take you out of Lord Bar. Take me and you out of, out of Lord Bar. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I'm trying to say God is in control. God is in control. Do not worry. Hallelujah. Here is how God was in control for this boy called Mephobosheth. We're not going to read. uh, It's in the first book of Samuel, chapter 18. As I said, the first king of Israel, his name was Saul. He was very wicked. He did not like David so much, even though David is one who, who killed Goliath and who brought Goliath's head to him. Hallelujah. From that day, because God is in control, because God is the one who knows everything, he connected Jonathan, who was the son of the king Saul, with David. They became like, like brothers. So every time that Saul was jealous because of the success of David at the battlefield, and he wanted to kill him, Jonathan will come and tell him, okay, this is happening, and do this. So all the time, David will escape. And one day, um, so their friendship got to the point where they had a covenant. You're going to look after my family if something happens to me, and then I will do the same. Amen? Amen. So one day, the king Saul and Jonathan got killed at the battlefield. And that's how David became the king. Hallelujah. And then when David became the king, he remembered the covenant. He remembered that he said he will look after Jonathan's family. Hallelujah. A covenant has has power. And that's the reason he said if there was one left in the house of Jonathan. Amen? Pretty much everyone was killed, but one person was left. But this son called Mephobosheth was in serious need of help. He was lame, as we read. He could not walk. He could not do anything. I can guess that he was begging for coins just to be able to eat. Even though his, he had the royal blood in him. Hallelujah. It's called favor. You are crippled. You live in a lower bar where no one comes to visit you. you. You are nothing. You have nothing. And because of favor, the king, who normally if you read all the history in the Bible, the king were killing all the other people, just because they want to stay themselves in power. And that's the king who remembers you. He remembers a nothing. A lame, a crippled, a person who cannot do anything. Brothers and sisters, I pray for the favor of the Lord to find you where you are. Find you where you are. Regardless if you are crippled or not. Regardless if you are smart or not. When the favor of the Lord kicks in, you will forget your condition. Hallelujah. Uh The favor of the Lord will cause someone to look after you, to look for you, 
wherever place you are. Hallelujah. This son, as I, say, um, I was saying, was living in the Lord above. If you are here this morning and say, okay, I think the definition of Lord above matches with what I'm going through. No one understands me at home. I barely talk to my parents. Even at my workplace, they, they don't like me. I guarantee you they don't like me. Maybe you are addicted and you, you smoke too much or you drink too much or whatever you do. And you think that there is no way out. Let me tell you, Mephobosheth did not think there was a way out. He was already living at the bottom of the bottom, a low place called Lord Bar, a place where there was no word, no revelation, nothing. Brothers and sisters, there is hope for you too. I'm saying there is hope for you. What you are going through today will be solved today because there is hope. There is hope. Hallelujah. There is a way out. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. That's the reason I said listen to this message carefully. It could be for you or for a family member. Hallelujah. It's not about money. It's not about whatever. Even the people we know who are super rich, hmm, we can name them. They take their life. So it's not money that brings peace. Uh -huh. Just keep that in mind. How many people only this year, if you read the news, super rich, they even don't know who to give the money to. But they should, they should give to us because we know what to do with the money. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord Bar is a very dangerous place. Lord Bar has no respect for you, for your money, your stature, whatever you are. Nothing. Lord Bar is a place of death. Dangerous place. And I'm here to expose Lord Bar today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, is there anyone else that I may show kindness? That's the word today. I am talking to the people who are desperate. I do not know what you're desperate for or about or whatever. But God this morning is saying, is there anyone out there that I can show kindness today? The kindness of God went, skipped everyone who was living in the palace, everything, everyone who was living in the city, no, he went to Lord Bar, a place where people were, I mean, you could not go there. I see many people, especially when I was traveling, they have all these masks and everything because they don't want to smell or touch other people, right? When you go to Lord Bar, that's how you dress. But that's where God went to look for someone. There is hope for you, my brother. There is hope for you, my sister. Do not lose hope. Amen. Hallelujah. Mephobosheth, who was Jonathan's son, actually the meaning of the name is shame. Good morning, shame. How are you doing, shame? My son's name is shame. That was Mephobosheth's name. The meaning of the name. Not only you live in Lord, in Lord Bar, but your name means sh uh, shame. What happened to Lord uh, to, to Mephobosheth? Mephobosheth, as I said, was the son of Jonathan, who was the son of the king Saul, the great king Saul. He had royal blood. He was born in a palace. Eh? He was not eating like you, you and me eat, my brother. No. He was eating, I mean, gluten-free bread, all these things that I, I, I even don't care about. You, you understand? People were there to take care of him. When he was five years old, that's the time where his dad, Jonathan, and his granddad, uh, the king, Saul, were killed. So they were killed when he was five. The servant who was looking after him 
was now afraid because they knew who was coming to power, David. And they knew how Saul treated David. So they <laughs> flee from the house. They started running. So the servant grabbed the Mephibosheth and started running. Unfortunately, Mephibosheth fell on the ground. Probably the servant fell too, I don't know. But the Bible is talking about Mephibosheth who fell on the ground, broke his leg, and that was the last time he walked. Hallelujah. Amen. By going back to this story where the, 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 the servant dropped Mephibosheth, I'm just trying to show you something. Mephibosheth was not born disabled. He was born like a future king. Hallelujah. Amen? He was not born disabled. He became disabled. Hmm? There is certain things that will happen in your life. You, when you were born, everyone was coming and saying, oh, cute baby, cutie, cutie. But down the road, something happens. Hallelujah. Things will happen to us. Mephobishef was not born in Lord of all. As I said, he was born in a palace, future king. But down the road, he found himself in Lodibar. That was the bottom of the bottom. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said when the servant grabbed Mephibosheth and started running, Mephibosheth fell on the ground, and the Bible says his name was Mephibosheth. Before that dropping, the Bible is not talking about his name. Amen? That means his name came from the way he was now. Amen? He became shame because he, he became crippled. You cannot be a king if you're crippled. How are you going to fight? Eh? How? So, the, the situation he was in was not a situation he was born in. He was just a normal person. And then later on, he became shame and kicked out to go to live in Lord Bar, who maybe the servant thought the new king will never get there because no one goes to Lord Bar. Hallelujah. He had everything you could dream of, but it never happened. He lost his dad. He lost his legs. He lost everything and the kingdom at the same time. He lost his position, and he went to live in Lodabar. Life sometimes is not fair. You can look at your life and say, life is not fair. I got married. I thought everything would be okay. But now, look, I have no children. I live now in Lodabar. Oh, I do have kids, but my kids have a condition. So terrible that this is not life. Brothers and sisters, I live in Lord Bar. I studied, I have a diploma. Everyone applies. Even those who have a lower diploma, diploma than me, they are able to secure a good job. I'm desperate. I live in Lord Bar. Hallelujah. I remember a guy who worked for, with me uh, back, um, back home. One day he told me, you know, all the men in, in our family, when they get to 35 years old, approximately, they die. And then at that time, he was 33. And then I said, hmm, I, I don't know why you believe such thing. Oh, what is the condition? Oh, we just uh, develop a cancer, um, liver cancer, like people drink a lot. So all the men in my family, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they try to live, I mean, a normal life, but some of them, not all of them, when they get to that age, they die. And then I said to him, if you believe really that you're going to die, and then you're going to die, because everything, you, you're ready to die. But you can say, I am not dying, I'm living. Uh -huh. I am living. 
he did not know Jesus, it was difficult to talk to a person like that. He gave his, his, his life to Jesus at the end of his life. Uh, okay. But I would have preferred him to give before. Yeah. Oh, you, you never know. When he reached 35, he passed as well. Lord Ibar. We have people living here with us. They smile. They do everything you want. But they spend the majority of their time in Lord Ibar. Completely depressed. They don't know what to do. They have tried everything. They are here. They are hurting day and night here. As I said, everyone will experience Lord Ibar. One day or another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's difficult. These are the people who are not happy. You married, but you're not happy. Because you're expecting kids and kids are not coming. Or you were hoping to get married by now. And nothing is happening. No one is knocking at your door and you don't understand. I have everything that it takes. And nothing is happening. And you develop this spiritual Lord bar place. Hallelujah. But we're going to break that today. Amen. We will break that today in the name of Jesus. Amen. If Jesus was able to go to Lord bar a place where no one could go, and look for Mephobosheth, who could not even walk, and elevate him, I guarantee we will do the same for you. Amen. Do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. But let's review how Mephobosheth got out of there. Remember, I spoke about a covenant. Because of a covenant between David, the, the new king, and his dad, Jonathan, the Bible says the king remembered Jonathan, because of a covenant. So the covenant revealed that the, per the Mephobosheth permanent situation was actually temporary. Amen? He was living, he, he had even a son. I mean, he had made his life in Lodibar. It was done. You may be here and you think it's done for you, it has been 30 years I'm living this way. It's over. I'm here to say you are wrong. Amen. It is not over. It's only Jesus who can say it's over. Amen. If he has not said over, it's not over yet. Amen. Hallelujah. A covenant revealed that something that Mephibosheth thought was permanent actually was not even permanent. It was temporary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, in here, here in this place, let me be bold and declare the end of your situation. Amen. Uh -huh. I will grab your hand and we will walk together out of Lodi Bar. Amen. Because that's not the place that God designed for you. Yes, I understand you become accustomed to your problem and you prefer to live in Lord Bar because all the people around you look like you, walk like you, they're all crippled. If it's not mentally, it's hands, it's legs, something does not work. But that is not your place. That is not your place. Hallelujah. We said here that 2018 is a year of grace revolution. That was not just a word that we throw out there, you know, to be seen and heard. That was serious, and things are happening. Amen. I said on December 31st, 2018, we will hear testimony, unbelievable testimonies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of grace revolution, what was impossible will become possible for you in 2018. Amen. Hallelujah. 2018 is a year old. A lot of people will move out of Lord Bar. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, it will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Bar is a low place. You may be stuck in Lord Bar. Hallelujah. But keep in mind that Mephobosheth was not born in Lord Bar. 
You, are, you were not born in Lord Bar as well. You were born from parents who loved you. There was hope for you. But things switched and turned into something you don't like. You were not drinking, but now you're drinking. You, you were not using um, drugs, but now you're hooked to those things. But do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. You connected to the person whose definition is joy, hope, grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no way you can stay in Lord Bar. We will take you out of Lord Bar today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God Almighty remembered Mephibosheth. The fact that you live in Lord Bar, the land of unknown people, you know, rejected people, uh, forgotten people, depressed people, poor people, addicted. The fact that you have a problem that sometimes defines you. Mephibosheth was named Mephibosheth, was named Shem because he became Shem. Hallelujah. If you have not, you don't have a husband and you're turning 40, you're turning 50. I'm saying you, your name is not shame. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have been waiting to have a child and the, nothing is happening, your name is not shame. Amen. Your problem, your situation does not qualify you to live in Lord Bar. You understand? It's not because I'm crippled that they have to grab me and throw me in Lord Bar and live there. No. I am the son of the Most High God. My place is not in Lord Bar, so I'm not going to live in Lord Bar. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah, I have no job for a long time. That does not qualify me to be identified with Lord Bar. I have no husband. That does not qualify me to live in Lord Bar and to be identified with Lord Bar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not because you are, your child is becomes crazy that God will not remember you. It is not because you have been crippled all your entire life since you were five years old that the Lord will not remember you. I pray today that the Lord remembers you. I don't care how long you have been in this situation. The Lord will remember you today. When the Lord remembers you, your situation changes. Hallelujah. Today I'm saying your days in Lord Bar are over. How many people from the bottom of their heart, they know my days in Lord Bar are over. The situation I'm going through is over. Hallelujah. I want to see your hands. It's over, hallelujah. It's over because we proclaim it. It's over because we proclaim it. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we have power in us. What we proclaim with your mouth is what will happen to you. Hallelujah. I know a, a little story of a guy who got um, stuck in, in um, how do you call this uh, huge fridge where they put us? Uh, how do you call it? A, f a freezer, a huge freezer. So he went into the freezer. For some reason, he was a worker. And then he locked himself in the freezer, right? He got stuck in there. But the freezer was locked. But he did not know. You understand? He did not know. He started saying, okay, I'm going to die. It's, gonna, it's cold. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't believe that they will find me alive. Guess what? The next morning... Even though that thing was off and the temperature was maybe around 72, 73, he passed. The thing was off. 73 the Fahrenheit it cannot kill you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's what you confess. It's what you say with your mouth. What do you say with your mouth today? Hallelujah. That is very important. I was talking about a covenant. Mephibosheth was remembered because of a covenant. 
The covenant was not between him and another person. It was between his dad and the new king, David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare that because the covenant that we have, you have, and I have with Jesus, that God remembers you. That God remembered that your kids are not doing well. Uh -huh. Some are using drugs. God remembers you that you have been out of job. That your business is not doing good. That you have been waiting for a fiancé. The fiancé is not coming because of a covenant that you have with Jesus. I pray that God remembers you. Amen. Hallelujah. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 11 in the Amplified Bible says, For the scripture says, Whoever believes in him, whoever adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, will not be disappointed in his expectations. We never be put to shame. No more Mephibosheth, because you have a covenant with Jesus. Hallelujah. His blood was shed for you and me. Hallelujah. Would you tap into that this morning and say, I will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. When David, King David called Mephibosheth to the palace, the disabled, the no good, the desperate, the very poor, and he said, from today on, do you see the change of status from today on? I am saying today, look very well at your status. Prepare yourself to say goodbye to your status. Because from today on, God is going to change your status. Change your status. I can tell some people their status will change today. And some other people prefer to say, Lord, Bar. that is your problem. I am now going to spend my night in Lord, Bar today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mephibosheth, who was poor, crippled, alone, living in, in a crazy life. When you look at your past, I was in the palace, and now look where I am. All of a sudden, the king himself is saying, from today on, will you eat with me? Yeah. You know, when you eat with the king, actually you have choice. Yeah. You know, it's not like us. If you cook potatoes, you cannot cook rice. It's a waste, okay? You have to choose. If you cook beef, you cannot cook chicken. Right, yeah. hey, am I the only one who does that? <laughs> uh-huh. Are you crazy of cooking beef and chicken and whatever again? No, you don't do that. You choose. Because you cannot afford beef and then you understand. But when you eat with the king, uh -huh, you have all the choices. This beef is kind of red. This is medium cooked. This is very well. I mean, you have a choice. This is a person who was begging for a change to be able to buy something. Hallelujah. When you meet the Lord, you tap into the covenant. Your status changes, hallelujah. That is what I'm talking about today. Amen. Amen. The king said from today on, you will never be thirsty again. You will never go to bed with an empty stomach again. From today on, you are going to eat with me. People are going to serve you. The same very people who did not even look at you when we met. Or they just touch in the pocket and then find the coin and then just throw the coin on you. You know, they don't care. They don't care about you because you're nobody. The same people will serve you. Amen. Same people will serve you. The one who has rejected, the one who had no hope, the one who was crawling on the ground to be able to move, now is sitting with the king at the king's table. Let me make it clear today, regardless of what you're going through. First of all, God is aware. God knows. God is in control. 
And the most importantly, he has a plan for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May I declare that your situation is temporary? Amen. How many believe that? God has a plan for me. He has a plan for you. Your situation is temporary because of a covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You might be single still, and you think that good people are already gone. You know, they took them all. No, 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 no. There was another one coming. Uh -huh. They are coming, hallelujah. The one who remembered Mephibosheth is alive. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> you can cry if you want, but crying will not help your situation. Connect to, to Jesus. Jesus is the only one who can change your situation. We were talking about Lazarus. Jesus is the only one. After three days, Lazarus was dead. He came and said, Lazarus, come on up here. Hallelujah. Something is probably dead in you, but do not worry. Mm -hmm. The one you connected to, the one who has a higher covenant, is saying, come on up here. It was dead. I'm bringing it to life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Some people think, I deserve my situation. I'm in Lord Ball because I did not go to school. I'm useless. I did not grow up with all my parents. I deserve to be rejected, to not be loved. It's normal. Mephibosheth felt the same. He had no parents. He was crippled. He was very poor. But brothers and sisters, the one who has the final say, it's God and God himself. If God has not say, you, Julie, today, you will remain in Lord Bar. If God did not say that to you, there is no need to go to Lord Bar today after service. Uh -huh. Be bold. Have those kind of bold prayers. I am not going to Lord Bar today. I may be single, I'm turning 40, no problem. God is sending mine, my way. It's coming my way. Hallelujah. Amen. I did not hear all the singles say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because of a covenant, may the covenant that was signed and ratified at the cross of Golgotha by the blood of Jesus covers you in the name of Jesus. Covers, covers your infirmity in the name of Jesus. Covers everything you are lacking in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the covenant that will save you. It's the covenant that caused David to remember Mephibosheth. It is the covenant that will cause God to remember you. Hallelujah. Today in your prayer, just say, your blood was shed for me because of that covenant at the cross. Would you remember me today? I have no children. I've been married for 10 years plus. No children. Would you remember me? 2018 has been declared a year of grace revolution. I do not want to pass 2019 without seeing my blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember me today, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. There is no one, no devil, who can stop God's plan for you. Hallelujah. No one. The plans are not coming from them. How can they stop something is not even coming from them? They did not make the plan. They don't control the plan. They even don't have the schedule of the plan. So they cannot control anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those who are in Lord Bar. I pray that while you are still in Lord Bar, while you are depressed, while you have lost hope, I hope that God finds you where you are. The Bible is not saying that Mephibosheth did everything he could to go to the king David's house and knock and remind King David that my dad, Jonathan, actually was your friend. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? God will meet you where you are. Amen. The same, do not change anything. Just connected to the most high. 
He will come and will meet you where you are. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't try to help God. He does not need your help. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many may think that Mephibosheth's situation crippled, very poor, mentally ill, physically ill, will now qualify him for King David's favor. But everything we have seen right now, we spoke about. Hallelujah. It's the favor of the Lord that calls David to remember Mephibosheth. So if you are here and saying, actually, my situation is terrible, I'm not the strongest, I'm not educated, I'm nobody, I'm not wealthy, I live in Lodebar, maybe I don't qualify. You qualify. You qualify. You do qualify, hallelujah. Uh -huh. It is impossible, the situation you're living in, but I proclaim that the plans of God will come to pass in your life regardless of your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I'm declaring this and the devil is saying something different. Reminding you, you're short, you're tall, you're fat. Look at yourself. No one can love you. Brothers and sisters, be firm and say this is a lie. Uh -huh. The devil is a lie. Hallelujah. The plan of the Lord will come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Some people here are businessmen, women. Let me declare that the plans of the Lord will come to pass. Amen. Be bold in your prayers. I am not going to Lord about anymore. The plans of the Lord will come to pass. Amen. Remind yourself the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. Dream and dream big. Dream big, hallelujah. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you see Juliet here? Yeah. Eh? You remember her testimony? You, yeah, definitely you know your testimony. <laughs> Juliet, some 15 years ago, gave a testimony. I mean, I cannot believe it. She went to look for a, a, a work. She did not have work. Amen? She went to Walmart. Dear foot Walmart. And then she asked them, I need a job. I will be a cleaner. They said, no, we want you to be a cashier. She said, no, 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 no. I just want to be a cleaner. I just need a job. Just give me a job. I want to be a cleaner. They said, no, you'll be a cashier. God had a plan for her. She needed to know how to count money, touch money, touch a lot of money. Hallelujah. She had a dream to be a businesswoman, to open her own daycares. Hallelujah. But she was asking to be a cleaner. And God was pulling her, go count money. Because in your life, you are going to count money. Hallelujah. She is here. She has daycares. Put an S. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do not be discouraged with people who want you to stay in Lord Bar. They look at you, they say you are nothing, you are useless, you're not good. Actually, you are even ugly, you're not smart. Don't be discouraged by those people. They will not be able to stop the plans of God in your life. Amen. When you move out of Lord Bar, they will say there, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people in your life are discouraging you because <clears throat> when, when De King David called Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was shaking and said, okay, how can you even talk to me? Sometimes we limit ourselves. Why? Because of what we hear about ourselves. Because what people are saying about us. I'm able God created me to be able and do something, but people will tell you something different over and over and over. In the end, you will believe that. God wants you here, and then you find yourself going to the other direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And let me rebuke right now every bad word that has been spoken over your life. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Sir. You will be successful as God has designed you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has the power and the capacity to meet you in Lord Bar and to take you out of Lord Bar. He has the capacity to change your life in the instant like this, suddenly. Suddenly. God today, by removing I'm going to repeat this again. Hallelujah. By bringing you out of Lord Bar, God is bringing you to a place where there is a word, where there is a revelation, where there is blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you say today, God, enough is enough. I'm getting out. Out of Lord Bar. Mm -hmm. Out of Lord Bar. You have been witnessing your friends getting married, but nothing has happened to you. Let me say today, your turn as well is coming. Amen. Your turn is coming. Uh, you have been waiting for baby, babies. They are not coming. Let me, let me prophesy, your babies are coming. Uh -huh. Businessmen, women, and everyone, money is coming. Money is coming your way. Money is coming, hallelujah. Husband, who is looking for a husband? Husband is coming your way. A beautiful fiancé is coming your way as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2018, I will remember 2018 in my, my entire life. Hallelujah. 2018 will change how people think. Hallelujah. I know 2018 for some people brought terrible things. Amen? You lost your husband. You lost your work. You lost, you lost, you lost. Doors were closed for many people in 2018. You will understand one day that that was a blessing as well. Amen. Some doors must be closed. If they are not closed, they are bringing you down. Hallelujah. Thank God because they are closed. It's hurting. It is hurting. Right now, it's terrible. But it's a blessing anyways. In the end, you will understand, hallelujah. God has a plan, and no one, even your circumstances, will not, will not stop him. I just pray that you understand today that all the doors that God will close in 2018 was for your good. Was for your good. Hallelujah. I would like to finish by reading some verses from this chapter, chapter 9. David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul, household named Ziba. The Bible said, they summoned him to appear before David. God is going to summon people to appear before him in order to bless you. This guy, Mephobisheth, was living a place where only one person remembered. The King David, the great King David, ordained a person to appear before him right away. The guy came shaking because he worked for the king so he knows this is the end for, for me. But that was not God's plan. God has a different plan for you. He sent him to look for that guy. God will cause people to do something they did not know they could do for you. Amen. For you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? When finally they brought Mephobosheth, he was probably shaking as well. You see where he's coming from, and you see where they're bringing him. He was in the pit. They're bringing him into the palace. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You tell me if he was not shaking. He's saying they're killing me. I'm the last person alive 
from the family of Saul. What do you think is going to happen to me? They're going to kill him. Maybe I should stay in the pit. I was okay down there. Hallelujah. When he gets there, King David says, Mephobisheth. And then he said, at your service. The Bible says, verse 7, don't be afraid. Okay. Why is the King David says, saying, don't be afraid, if the guy was not shaking to death? Eh? He was afraid he was about to die. And the king said, don't be afraid. I'm not here to kill you. I'm here to bless you. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to you, to your grandfather's soul, and you will always eat at my table. Brothers and sisters, even the servant, I think it says there, even the servant who worked for Saul were sermoned right there and they were told to, to work for Mephobosheth and the, the, the Mephobosheth children as well. Hallelujah. Do you understand the change of status? Who has been here in a status where you believe there could not be any change any day? I am saying your status will change. Amen. Your status will change. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What hinders us is, what blocks the blessings is us. Look what Mephibosheth says. After King Saul has done everything, after, I mean, King David has done everything, after he, he, he told him, I'm not here to kill you, I'm here to bless you. I will restore everything that belongs to your parents. You eat at my table. And he is saying, what is your servant what, that you should notice a dead dog like me? How come you notice a person like me? How can you come this low to find me? Brothers and sisters, God will find you. Even if you go as low as possible, he will find you there because the plans that God has is to bless you, Amen. to prosper you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm talking today right now to fathers. If you, you could just close your eyes. Amen. I'm talking to fathers and mothers whose children have decided to live a dangerous life. Today I'm here to tell you, wipe your tears. Your child may be in Lord Bar, but he is not of Lord Bar. You, I'm talking to you who is desperate. Mephibosheth was desperate as well. He did not think there could be any person who could even love them. The same way God showed favor to Mephibosheth, that's the same way I'm asking God to show favor to you. Amen. Hallelujah. I prophesy today, this Sunday, that God's favor will locate you. Even a Lord above, God will remember you. Hallelujah. Once the favor of God locates you, you will forget the way to Lord above. Your GPS will forget how to get you to Lord above anymore because you're going to eat at the table of the king. Hallelujah. What matters, brothers and sisters, is not where you were born, how rich your parents were. How many servants you had. What matters is a covenant. And the covenant that you and I have is the covenant with Jesus. Money did not prevent all these famous people to kill themselves, to be miserable with a lot of money. But the covenant is something that will change your situation. Hallelujah. If you are here and you are not sure about the covenant you had with, with Jesus... If you have never give, given your life to Jesus, you have no covenant with Jesus, I'm asking you to show your hand. It is important to correct that immediately. It is the covenant that will save you. It is the covenant that will help you get off Lord above. If you are here and you are not sure about your covenant, yes, you had one, but you are not sure. You're not sure if really you count for, for God. You're not sure about your situation with God. We will pray for you to reestablish 
that covenant again. To remind God to remember you. Hallelujah. The altar is open. Anyone who needs a prayer, you just come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you receive anything today? <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we just want to thank you today for your grace, for your word. We understand that what we need is a covenant, a covenant with Jesus, a covenant that will cover all our flaws, a covenant with Jesus, because Jesus, the name of Jesus is the name of, above everything. We're presenting to you all our troubles, all our problems, Lord, and we bow before your throne. We're asking, Lord, today, would you remember us? Would you remember us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you are the Lord. Most high. 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 Yes, you are. Yes, you, you are the Lord. You are the Lord. Hello. 